Um, so we went with this surreal kind of alien landscape, um, but tried to keep to basic principles so that it was not too out there. Hey, what's up guys? I just got back from the Chicago Aquatic Experience a couple of days ago, and so today we're gonna be checking out the footage from that. So uh, I know that you've probably seen a couple of videos where, you know, surrounding the event, but you're gonna get to see it from my perspective. We're gonna check out a bunch of the awesome aquascapes that were there. There was a couple different contests, and I even got to get some interviews with um, a few of them, and so I think those are really interesting, and I think you're gonna like that. We spent a lot of time at the Flip Aquatics slash YouTube booth where, you know, Corey was signing shirts, and it was just, it was a really, really awesome time. If you couldn't make it, I'm sorry, you know, try and get out there at some point in your life. I think it's totally worth it. It was, it was just an awesome experience. You know, not just meeting YouTubers and viewers, but being able to actually, like, spend time with people. You know, like, we'd go out to dinner every night and just, like, really get to sit down and get to know people. That was, that was a really special thing for me, you know, without, without being too cheesy. So, anyway, let's go ahead and let's check out some of the footage. I hope you enjoy. Sean, I, I think you're gonna win, dude. I'm rooting for you, oh, dude. Big time. Yeah. Right? Big time. Big yeah. time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We, we made dude, a trip out from. Yeah, uh, dude. That turned out amazing. You like that? That turned out stellar. Isn't that cool? The light behind it is even better. Yeah. Whoa. You, yes. <laughs> yes. You bring a real artistry to the to the crowd. Yes. It's really cool to see. And I'm planting a rotalia. So the top, so it looked like the hair was coming out, <laughs> floating around. <laughs> oh man. But most of my rotalia is pretty janky, so I might. Go shopping at some point today. <laughs> oh my gosh! Now, <laughs> Except now, the only difference is I'm live now, and you guys aren't. Now Peck Techs. So. Oh, are you live? I'm bringing it to the people now. It'll take like you guys a couple days. Oh, I won't have this uploaded for three weeks. Yeah, I won't have this up for three weeks. <laughs> oh my gosh! Whoa! Everybody go find it. There's too much. There's too much cool stuff going on here. What's up, man? How's it going? Pretty good, man. Nice hey, to meet nice you. Hey, nice to meet you, yeah. too, dude. Oh, I'm bumping into Bob. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> oh, Bob, watch where you're going. Day two of the Chicago Aquatic Experience. We're about to roll in. It is packed out here. Parking was difficult, but you know what? Besides the fact that it is cold and now rainy today, we're excited to head inside and mess around with some fish tanks. Fish and tanks? I don't know, Nate. There's, <laughs> there's gonna be a lot of people here today, man. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be too much fun, so we'll, uh, we'll see you guys inside.
Alright guys, I'm here with John who actually won first place for the Nano Aquascaping Contest and also placed second over in the larger tanks. We'll go take a look at that one in just a second, but John, uh, I'll, I'll put his Instagram up, check it out. He's an awesome aquascaper. He's going to run us through the Nano tank that he set up uh, for this year's contest. So, John, definitely. Let's, uh, let's check it out, man. So, I mean, this tank is awesome. Thank you. It's Thank awesome. You. Uh, yeah. Did you have any inspiration for the tank? Certainly. Um, you know, obviously we always try to take inspiration from nature, but um, what I tell people is aquascaping is, is about giving an impression of nature, so it's not necessarily what you see when you walk outside your backyard. It could be that. It's more about what you feel. Uh, for me, when I was a little kid running around, even these days I go hiking, I love rock climbing uh, and, and trying to kind of just getting all up into uh, into into nature and and that's kind of what I wanted people to feel when they saw this um, I wanted people to, to look at this and and want to go explore it uh, so yeah so I it's the the story behind it is is uh, I tried to create different pathways so you can look at different areas of the tank there's several areas where there's bridges um, the path below kind of winds through and it, it draws your eye in um, yeah it's very cool Dra do you like to work with Dragonstone not really, actually. This is, <laughs> this is my first uh, first time working with Dragonstone. I usually use uh, cereal or limestone-based uh, materials, but okay. uh, I wanted to do something different so people wouldn't expect it uh, from me. It's, it's similar in, in the style I typically do, but it's different materials, so I, I wanted to show some flexibility there. Right, right, and I mean, very different material, right? Yeah. Because, I mean, we all know Dragonstone is just, it's crumbly clay, right? Yeah, yeah. But that gives you, that gives you more flexibility. It did, yeah. You it, know, compared to using cereal stuff. Yeah, some, sometimes you are limited by your materials. I will say that the, the Dragonstone, I, what I did like about working with it this time is I was able to have a vision in my head and then go make it rather than have to look at my hardscape first and say, well, what can I make with this? Uh, so that was that was a benefit. Um, Dragonstone is wonderful to work with, uh, but it's my first time using it. So Wow, yeah. wow. Well, very, very impressive. And so um, for those that aren't familiar with how aquascaping contests work, you spend... A lot, I mean, you build this before you come to the event. Yeah, so I, I, I set up a, um, a car, or plywood uh, station with the dimensions of the tank. I did some practice runs, tore things down, set it up, tore it down, got exactly how I wanted it. And then uh, before the contest, I tore it down again and had to reset it up here. So where it's like putting a puzzle back together. Did, did, it, did it come out? The, the, the exact way that you had it before. Um, it's a, it's not it's not quite where where it was before. Um, you know, you're, you're on time constraints here. The plants have gone through a rough transition uh, in the travel. So uh, I'm hoping to take it home and grow it out for a couple a couple months and get it looking how I actually envisioned it, yeah, and, then, yeah. and then getting well, some, some well, it good was, shots. It was so. good enough to win, so. Well, thank you. Good job, man. Uh, real, real quick, before we go check out the other tank, uh, the plants in here, obviously it's moss heavy. Yes. Uh, what type of moss? I'm seeing maybe a couple different types. Yes. The blues. Yeah, there's a mix of uh, uh, Christmas moss and then just some other species that kind of just got mixed in. Mm -hmm. I, I actually like mixing plants. I think it gives a more natural feel. Um, Interesting. Than being too too uniform. There's some uh, mini Bustophilandra, species, um, some hemianthus uh, and the, on the bottom there, mm -hmm. or dwarf baby tears. Um, yeah, it's, it's a pretty limited plant selection. Um, I did have some Monte Carlo weeping down, but it did not uh, tr travel well here. I think it got shocked by the cold, so yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, definitely for this scale, I needed to keep the, the, the leaf size small to, to preserve the scale. Oh, definitely, yeah. definitely. I mean, it looks, it looks huge. Very cool. All right, let's go check out uh, the bigger tank, which is kind of similar, but yes, we'll, we'll, awesome. we'll see. Sounds good. All right, so John, tell me about this tank. Before you do, you set this up with a team of people yep. down here, right? So this is your aquascaping Yeah, this is our aquascaping your team. Yeah, so uh, Marvin Lowe, Van Tau, Scott Miller, and Will uh, Romero. So uh, we, we started putting this together a few months ago with sketches, getting our idea. We wanted something to, to really stand out from what has been done here in the past. Um, so we went with this surreal kind of alien landscape. Um, but tried to keep to basic principles so that it was not too out there. Um, we were trying to find a balance between something that would stand right in your face, uh, but also would, would have nice flow, would follow uh, uh, principles that kind of tied it back together. So, And we ended up getting second place.
surprised. So I'm very happy with yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. I was I was surprised that it didn't get first place. But you know, hey, there's there's always next year, right? Oh yeah. So yeah. the thing that I really like about this skate is that if you come down here, you can see that the, all the points they kind of they align with each yeah. other. And yeah. I mean, it, it, it sort of it looks like maybe it was all one yeah. half or something at one point that broke apart. I think yeah. Really so cool. so so the idea was kind of to have it eroded earth, um, and and these structures remain. In an aquascape, it's always a, um, a challenge to balance harmony and tension. Uh, with these structures being so unique and, and out there, uh, they provide a lot of tension on their own, so we tried to keep a lot of the, the strata within the rock uh, the same and harmonious to, to, to bring that balance through. And there's just so much to look at, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like he, su he suggested, you know, get down lower and check out all the see-throughs in this main piece, you know? and. Yeah, it's a, we, we it's try just to build layers of perspective, layers of perspective, and, and and we want it's a live competition. People are walking around the tank, so we wanted it so you look at it from different angles and you see different things. Exactly, exactly. And so I mean, you know, depth wise, you did great. You have this massive, you know, this is probably several pieces here. Yes, it is. That are glued together, right? That's how you get this. You can't buy a piece of dragonstone that looks like this. No. Unfortunately, guys, you gotta you gotta make it yourself. Yeah. So but that's that's yeah, part we, of the fun. Yeah, we we, we we had an idea and we we went and built it. Uh, and the Dragonstone is good for that. It's, it's easy to break, it's easy to, um, to, to put back together in, in, in the shapes that you want. Yeah, so we have more you know, mixes of moss in here. We have what, the Monte Carlo. Do you find that Monte Carlo grows well on, on just Dragonstone? Uh, yes, but you have to dose the water column. Yeah. So, but as long as you're as long as you're dosing the water column with with Fertz, uh, I, I personally do uh, a modified EI dosing. I, yeah. I I do everything EI, but I drop nitrates to more uh, like I keep them around 10 ppm. And Monte Carlo will do fine. Most aquatic plants will will actually do fine without uh, nutrient based substrates. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, all the, like the Dutch scapes. Yeah. They just use sand and just dose the water column. No substrate. <laughs> Wow. Substrate is beneficial. I don't want to say it's not. It's beneficial. I use it all the time. It's 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 kind of a safety net too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can dose the water column and get away without it. Very cool, man. Very cool. Thank I you. think and so you guys don't have any you chose no nope. is there fish in here? There is they're hiding. They, are they all hiding? The camera. So let me see if I can get them out. What do, here. Yeah, what do you uh what do you have in here? Uh it's a school of reed tetras. Okay. So they they should be coming out in back there. Oh yeah. yeah, that's a that's a perfect fish. You know, it doesn't they, they don't take attention away from the scape. Right. Right? And that's that's very yeah, today they're a little they're a little nervous. Um, I don't know if it's because the lights recently came on or what, but uh, when the judging came around, they were schooling really nice. So Very, I think it worked in our favor. Very cool, man. Well, thank you. congratulations, John. Thank you. That thank you for showing me around the tanks. I wish you the best of luck, guys. Don't forget to go check out John's Instagram. It'll be in the description. All right. Hey, thanks, thank buddy. You. Nice to meet it. you. Nice to meet you too. All right, guys. I'm here with Hip. He is another contestant in the aquascaping contest. His Hello. tank got fourth place yesterday, and we're here to talk a little bit more about it. So uh, I'll put Hip's Instagram and actually his YouTube channel uh, in the links in the description, so you can go check it out. So anyway, Hip, let's uh, let's hear about your tank, man. Well. Uh I'm usually kind of a classic nature style um, when I do my layouts, but this year I decided to kind of branch out and try something new. So uh, I've been a fan of these forest diorama ty uh, type scapes, and I came across the, the right hardscape for it. So this year, you know, I decided to try something new out of my comfort zone, and uh, I'm actually quite proud of it. I think uh, I really hit the depth very well. Yeah. And um, uh, just overall, I'm very happy with how it turned out. Yeah, it definitely has like that kind of like creepy forest yeah. vibe to it, right? I mm -hmm. I really like it. So the wood we talked about, you're not quite sure what type of wood it is. It's just random stuff from local fish stores. But you also right. have you know some what is that Surya stone in there? Yeah, some Surya stone. Some Surya stone. And plant wise, we have some S repins. Yeah, some hair grass, Anubias. Uh, your typical, uh, I guess. Epiphytes and whatnot, you know, easy stuff to grow. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of more realistic. Like the plants are located where they would be in a, in a regular aquarium. So um, yeah, it looks yeah. fantastic, man. A lot of uh, a lot of gluing in this, or as yeah. far as the rocks go. Uh, well, as far as the plants go, there was a lot of gluing. Everything uh, with the rocks and the wood are mostly held in by gravity. 
um, I would just stack wood on uh, stack wood and rock on top of each other to keep it down. Okay. I have maybe one or two pieces of wood that are actually glued in, but um, the rest is actually you know just kind of loose and hang, you know, in there. Okay, wow. So even the even the the roots that were added here. So yeah, no that, glue that, or that those would are glued? be that that would be things that I had to glue in. Right, right. And then just kind of cover up the seams with some moss. And the light in the background, that's, I mean, that's a tactic that a lot of skaters use yeah. to help create, I mean, to create depth and to really draw your eye in. I mean, you want people to be looking down that channel. Right? Yeah, it highlights some, uh, some silhouettes that really bring out uh, the depth. And I think it just brings a really nice fantasy kind of uh, vibe to it. So, you know, the backlighting is actually one of the first times I've ever tried it as well. Yeah, and, um, I, I definitely want to start moving towards building scapes around the idea of having a backlight because yeah. I think I think it just makes the, t the shape look really cool. It does, yeah, it really does. Well, cool. Hip, thank you so much, man. Oh, thank I you appreciate very much. meeting you, and, uh, and we'll see you around. All right. We put this off until the last day, so we're doing it quick. There's people everywhere. <laughs> All right, still, it's the last day. It is Rob, the last day. Rob, let's go. Okay. All right, what shrimps, are we doing? Shrimps, booth, rocks. Let's get so Jimmy out of Jimmy. Jimmy, come Jimmy, on, Jimmy. Move. It's Jimmy, move. Jimmy, move. He's in the way. Okay, let's go. So, All right, so Amanda's yeah. catching shrimp. That's my wife. She is. Amanda. She's the best looking one here. She is. She is. <laughs> well, maybe Jimmy. I don't know. Uh, Jimmy. Jimmy's a good looking. Jimmy. Oh, never mind. Anyway. Never mind. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> have you guys been doing? Have you guys been doing well? Been yes, we're doing. We're doing well. We got the shrimp contest this year, so we got a lot going on with that, and a lot of good things going. Um, tons of people here, international breeders, people that I've looked up to, and all of a sudden they're coming over. They got Flip Aquatics t-shirts on, so it's been awesome. We got the YouTube booth going on. Um, we got Aqua Pros here. So yeah, they, they, this they, is this they, is the, they know I'm here. They know I'm here, Rob. Know, all right. They, so this is the makeshift aquarium lab. This is this is the makeshift aquarium lab. We set it up. For an experiment, it's going really good. They're not as well scaped. Uh, Mike didn't come early enough to help us with that. And so now we got crystal reds, we got tangerine tigers, um, we got Michelin's. So my goal is to convince Aqua Pros, as you know, to get some shrimp tanks. That's that's my ultimate goal this weekend. Well, we, we, so, we don't want to give too much away. Oh, oh, so. I think you know, <laughs> you know, they're coming. They're coming. All right, okay, good. So. We got that going on. We got some tissue culture plants. We got some driftwood. Um, it's been a long weekend. Yeah, it has. Been a long it, you know, oh man, it has. It has. Well, the booth is great. I mean, we had you know we had the, the YouTube pseudo YouTube booth over here. Yeah, it's been, it's been hectic over here, hasn't it? It, it has been a hectic weekend, um, but it's been awesome. We met so many of you guys, and uh, it's been cool. Like meeting Mike for the first time. Me, me, oh, I've met Corey before, but yeah. it, it was nice seeing him again, seeing Jimmy and everybody like that, Corvus. So it has been one of those weekends that uh, that you guys should definitely come to next year because they've already told us that next year the YouTube booth is going to get much bigger. So I hope, man. We, we need it. To we, for we, sure. we need it. We need at least we need two of these. <laughs> no, we need four. Of these. We, need, we need at least two of these. And we need Corey's going to get five thousand shirts next year. There you go. Ooh, that's a tall order. <laughs> he's, Maybe. He's Let's hope. Up. Let's hope. <laughs> We're going to have to buy a lot of easy green. <laughs> a lot of easy green. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys know where to go to buy your shrimp. Flipaquatics.com. Thank you very much. Right? That was a nice little plug. Yeah. This you like guy, that? Oh. Yeah. I, I, I do my best, you know? It's, it's been a blast. It's been so much fun to hang out with all these guys, to mess with Jimmy. Uh, you know, Jimmy, get in here. There goes a Jimmy. There goes a Jimmy. Where is he? He's right here in the middle. <laughs> this is the original sashimi whiskey. No one who knows who that is. No one knows? No. No, it's Jimmy of Aquarium Co-op. So, hey, that's a good question. Jimmy, when, when are you actually going to be on Jimmy of Aquarium Co-op? <laughs> that's a funny question. <laughs> No, I saw your picture in the thumbnail of the lid. Yeah, I actually toured that fish store by myself because he was busy talking business with the owner. Uh, so did you did you have a voiceover in it? Yeah. No. Well, so Jimmy did do his own video. <laughs> yes. All right. One. So we're good. One. That's it. Yeah. This this part isn't gonna make it into the video. No. <laughs> no we gotta redo that, guys. We gotta redo it. We gotta redo it. And then when we show up, we're like, hey, we got. Wait, I didn't get it on film. We gotta do it again. Sorry. It's not real. If it's not on film. Oh, we don't. I don't do it on film. Not you guys have a whole nerds with that attitude. Know. You haven't seen the nerds with attitude one. You're just not in it, man. <laughs>